Welcome to Six Sigma Green Belt. This is the first unit of the first course. So what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a statistical term that refers to standard deviation. And in this case, we're talking about a process. So it's a standard deviation about uh, its mean, the process's mean. The term Six Sigma first came about in 1987 at Motorola. Uh, and what they want to do is just improve product quality. And if you think back, I'm old enough to remember back when TVs failed like every two weeks and you used to have to test test tubes and things like that. They don't break anymore. Things are high quality and better, and that's because of Six Sigma. To be Six Sigma, it's actually 99.99932% of all product or services meet customer expectations. Or another way of putting that is about 3.4 defects per million opportunities. So, so why do Six Sigma? Well, business results. We want money. Uh, market share, whatever it is. And this is a good way to get senior management engaged, right? And it's a disciplined approach. It's repeatable. Define, measure, analyze, improve, control, DMAIC. And you get quick results, three to six months. Uh, and and it's repeatable. Again, like I said, let me use an example. I've got one company, they're saving over $7.4 million a year from Six Sigma operations. And by metrics, we were talking about what uh how are you going to measure success these are the things we use to measure our success and measure the company and what it does it, it tries to get some most bang from the buck from the infrastructure of the organization as it exists and, but you're always focused on the customer and process focus uh how does that process to deliver value to the customer in management by fact that's been around since baldridge uh, was around management by fact so what we want to do is we want to optimize the investment in time and money by an organization, get the most bang for the buck. We want to focus on organizational goals. And again, this ties in nicely to the uh, Baldrige criteria and other quality sources. What is our, our strategic objectives? And Six Sigma will help us get there. Uh, it also gives the ability to look at data, interpret it analytically and statistics. And by Greek science, what I'm talking about, uh, the ancient Greeks used to say, well, why does moss grow on the north side of trees, or, or other, other examples? And they sit there and debate it. Well, it's because of the shade, or no, it's because it's moist, no, it's because of the way the wind hits it. But they don't do any scientific experimentation to prove it. That's Greek science. And it happens a lot in a factory. Um, I, I don't know how many times I, I've heard uh, my engineering judgment, this is why that doesn't work. And, and they don't get it right. They don't do anything to prove it. They don't do any analysis or, or any testing. So it's a change in culture, management, training, and other uh, aspects of an organization. It's a cultural game changer. Six Sigma is actually just a, a part of the evolution of quality. Uh, it's not a revolution. It's, you know, the concepts and tools have been around for quite a while, actually. You know, Philip Crosby, quality is free. Deming, who taught the uh, Japanese, and then you got the other ones, the Japanese himself, uh, Juran, who also helped with the Japanese, uh, Shure, who came up with the idea of statistical process control, and Taguchi, uh, who came up with design of experiments uh, in the orthogonal arrays. It's all been there. It's just that Six Sigma puts it together. If your organization isn't doing Six Sigma now, if you start doing Six Sigma, it's going to change things. Right, it looks at the strategy, uh, financial result, and how you do changes and how you manage the changes. And it looks at what's happening right now with you know, results, your customer requirements, how effective you are. It looks at your capacity and your ability to meet the uh, demands of your current uh, customers. You know, we all live in the real world. Uh, Money, money drives everything in business. So six things is about being profitable. The best way to be pro profitable is to look at productivity. Are you more efficient? Quality, you're not making stuff that you can't sell. It's uh, good quality. And high performing organizations, they benchmark other organizations the best, the best. A lot of times people like to compare themselves to the worst so they look good, but that's not the way it works. You compare yourself to the best and compete against them. Empower employees, give them the power and the, um, the, uh, the, the ability to make changes and improve things. Number one problem in all organizations is communications. Um, if you get a strategic plan, make sure they understand a the strategic plan. Just kind of back off and see what happens with that to get that strategic plan. And getting better. What you're doing now is not good enough. 
is what uh, you got to get better than that. Six Sigma, usually you just divide into a project, and it focuses on saving money, improving customer satisfaction, and it's a process with the idea that if you get a robust process, the product or, or service will naturally come out of it in uh, good shape. And it focuses on very specific locations, you know, uh, within a plant or, or even little cells within that plant or office, wherever. And design, right? Design's where you get the most bang for the buck. That's where you can, if you get a good design, you got 90% of the battle fixed, right? And it's uh, focused on supplier processes. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in other words, you don't let suppliers get by on this either. They got to deliver you good product too. Metrics and goals. Uh, I mean, profit is all about m uh, money. I mean, let's face it. Cycle time, how fast can you get it out? How does the marketplace respond to that? What kind of resources are you going to need to make this happen? And you've got a balanced scorecard. You know, you got to do your process metrics. How are you going to measure that? Balanced scorecard. You find out the vital few. And again, it's define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And I'll send you an example of a project. Way back in 1996, a guy named Womack, who wrote uh, Seven Habits of Effective People, had five guiding principles. Uh, specify value by the product or the service. Identify the value stream. In other words, value as being something that the customer would be willing to pay for. And make that value flow through the process. And, and don't try to push value onto people. Wait for the customer to pull it out of you. Uh, this, and we'll talk about that later. But you pursue perfection. You got to believe that there's a perfect way to do things. And, cl and closely tied to uh, Six Sigma is this lean concepts and tools. Again, value, uh, benefits over cost, or, or something the customer would pay for. Value stream, how stuff the customer will pay for, how you add it throughout the process, how it flows through the process, and let the customer pull it out. And you got to believe that it's perfect. There's an ideal out there that's that's achievable. I've attached some uh, uh, videos um, in the readings that will show you some of these things. If you have specific uh, questions, go ahead and ask me. But these are all the lean techniques, and uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Uh, there simply just isn't enough space to, to talk about them all. But go to uh, YouTube, type in these uh, words, and see what you can find. Have you ever been uh, shopping and have the salesman tell you what you want, right, and, and how much uh, it's worth and things like that? No, it, it works the other way around. It's irritating. The customer defines the value. How much is this worth? And this is something that the customer is willing to pay for. Your job as an organization is to translate what the customer uh, would value into specifications and how much they're willing to pay for that. Are you, are you willing to pay 80 cents more for the name brand pickles at Walmart versus the uh, the Walmart brand? Again, the customer decides that. If he's not going to pay for it, that's called non-value added. This is called a waste, or the Japanese term for waste is muda. These are the mudas. Seven traditional mudas, overproduction, making more than you have, you know, just basically to make sure you have something to sell next time. Storing that stuff in inventory. Or, or stuff you use in your process, keeping that inventory, that's a muda. Defects, of course, re repair and rejecting uh, defects, that's, that's, that's a no-brainer. Moving around a lot, the customer's not going to pay you to move around, right, if you're not making, uh, adding value to it. Uh, processing, add a little bit extra, right? Uh, uh, if you, I was at a company that used to put a fatina on a hydraulic valve, and the customer was just painting right over that fatina, but they spent two hours per valve putting a fatina on the finish. That's over-processing. Waiting. I was at a meeting, a uh, plant-wide meeting, and they were waiting for uh, the plant manager. It cost them about oh, a little over 1200 bucks for that wait. And transport. If you have to transport it, move it around, the customer's not going to pay for that. If it comes from China, he doesn't care. He's not going to pay for that trip across China. That's not value added. In 1986, a guy named Goldratt wrote a book called The Goal. And he, and he realized that there were uh, bottlenecks within processes. So what he said, there's three measurements. How much is your throughput? How much inventory you have? Or operational expense? 
and you, and you want to maximize these to the dollars. Um, if you haven't read the goal, I'd, I'd recommend it. Uh, it gives a fundamental understanding of this theory of constraints. In other words, you got to get if you get value to flow, you got to eliminate the constraints on that value flow. You start at the design. Seventy to eighty percent of all quality problems are design related. And this came from a study by guys named Hockman and Paul. And you want to do return on investment, right? How much you're going to make versus how much you have to invest in this people, resources, material, etc. And you want to work on growing the income, right? New products account for a big part of sales nowadays, especially your OEM or you're providing health care, whatever it is, or, or it's got to be the new product. So what makes a uh, design roadmap uh, successful? Well, it's got to be a unique or superior product. You orient, there's got to be a market for it. You do a lot of pre-development work. There's nothing more embarrassing than doing a launch and have to recall everything that you did to redo it. Quality product definition. Uh, what, 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 is, what makes good? What is, how do you define quality? And how well can you make the process of executing the design, the uh, product itself, the manufacture of it? It's got to be a team effort. In other words, it can't just be engineers. It's got to be marketing, sales, uh, HR. Everybody's got to be involved in it. Proper project selection. Are you doing the right thing? If it, is it doable? Better to start off with uh, small projects and work into big ones. You prep for the launch. Top management has to be involved. The first one in the market usually wins. Uh, I attached an interesting article on uh, Tesla, an electric car. New product uh, process. What's your process for introducing new product? And it's got to be attractive to the market. And the company has to have the uh, competency to make these things. I, I like this slide. The concept study is it, uh, is it worthwhile doing? Feasibility investigations. Uh, you know, and I've come a long ways. I, I'm a product of my prejudice. If you would have told me that you could land a rocket and reuse a rocket, you know, 10 years ago I said it's impossible. Don't even waste your time trying to figure it out. Now, now I, I see SpaceX doing it all the time. I developed that new product. Again, uh, maintenance, how are you going to maintain that product? And how are you going to learn and get better all the time? The process I like to use, uh, or have always used, uh, for getting a new pre uh, product or process, you identify, design, optimize, and validate, right? And I, I do this not just on the product itself, but also the process to make the product in the factory. All right, you start thinking of Six Sigma right away and think all the way through like that. The other one, that DMAIC, that also works. Especially if you've got an existing product, you can go out there and you can define the problem, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And it's about improving the current uh, process. Here are some links. One is to the next unit. Others are to uh, other videos that uh, relate to what was covered in the presentation. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments or discussions, and uh, we'll get them answered.